Car is all packed and waiting at the curb, Miss Coppersmith. Thank you, Doug. I just have a few more bags over there to take down, and Violet, of course, but I'll bring her. Sure, I hope I have enough room. You're pretty full up already. I know. I overpacked. I can't help myself, but you never know how many shoes you're gonna need. <laughs> Hi, James. I'm almost packed up for my trip. According to the web, this Mitford is quaint. Also has a population way under Hatday at Fenway Park, and the nearest Starbucks is 300 miles away. You won't last a week. I know what I'm getting into. I spent a lot of my childhood there with my uncle. One day without your precious caramel macchiato, and you'll go crazy. I can go without the fancy coffees if I can get the necessary inspiration. Well, I hope so. Those Tom the Porcupine books are climbing up the bestseller list. It's time for Violet to knock that smug Tom off his perch. Deadline is 45 days away. I know, James. It's tight. It's not like you didn't know this was coming. But you haven't written one word since you... James? I don't mean to pry. Well, yeah, but you're so good at it. He's moved on. He's remarried. It's time for you to do the same. Not today. I mean move on. Start writing again. Well, that's what I intend to do. Well, that's great. Now, throw yourself into your work, enjoy the quaintness, and finish that book. The clock is ticking. Okay, James. I've got a really long drive ahead of me. I better get going. Bye-bye. 45 days. Well, here we go, Violet. a feather duster. Here you go, sweet kitty. Shadow, who do you belong to, huh? Who do you belong to, buddy? Can I come say hi? No, you got no collar, you got no tags, you got to... Whoa, slow down there, big guy, slow down. We haven't been formally introduced yet. Wow, are you lost? You want some water? Way. Now, don't get any ideas. This is just temporary, okay? Here we go. That's right. There you go. You want to go outside? See if you can fetch. You want to go outside? Do you want to go outside? Come on. A 
azalea. Still hanging on. Oh. Stay here, Violet. Beautiful guard. Hey, 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 I am so sorry. Okay, all right. I can replace that. This is why I have an indoor pet. This is why I have no pets at all. I don't have. He's not mine. What? The dog just shows up magically in your yard, and you engage him in a game of fetch? Sort of, actually. I found him. Oh, please. And then so I... You know, like most people would just say, "I'm sorry." I, he's honestly, he's not mine. I, I get it. It's not your dog. Just take him home. He, he's and that really... dog needs to be on a leash. He's a runner. He's really not mine. <laughs> Go get the ball. Go that way. I'm very sorry. Oh, no. No, no. This way. What are you doing? Come on, boy. Come on. Violet, don't be like that. I'm not procrastinating, I'm prepping. It's a process. So. Oh, no, no. I'm forgetting so much recently since this. My husband, Hal, says I have pregnesia. <laughs> but I never forget a face and I can't. Whoa. Oh, oh, wait a second. <laughs> of course. <laughs> You're Cynthia Coppersmith. Your uncle used to brag about you all the time. Oh, he is really missed around here. I miss him too. I don't want to impose, but. Would you mind? Oh, I'd love to. Oh, thank you. This is so exciting. So what are you doing in Mitford? Boston was feeling noisy and I'm tight on deadline. I'm going to take advantage of my uncle's beautiful cottage and then I'll put it on the market. Oh. Did you bring Violet with you? She won't let me go anywhere without her. She's kind of a diva. <laughs> well, welcome both of you to Mitford. <gasps> Oh, wait, one moment. I know you're here to work, but every Friday night we have a potluck in the park. It's a summer tradition, and we don't have anyone signed up for side dishes, so we desperately need you. Will you come? Oh, <laughs> oh this looks lovely. But I'm here to work, and I don't even have a title yet. <laughs> even Violet's looking at me like I'm a slacker, <laughs> and she naps 17 hours a day. Well, then who is she to judge? <laughs> If I can swing it, I'll come by. Great. Oh. So nice to meet you. Bye. Not working. 
I'm not avoiding. I'm looking for inspiration. You made it! <laughs> Is that macaroni and cheese with bacon? Because I've been craving macaroni and cheese all week. <laughs> no, sorry. It's potato <laughs> salad. Store-bought. Yeah, honey, I told you I'd make you that mac and cheese. Oh, really? When? When our baby is 20? <laughs> Hi, I'm Hal, great veterinarian, terrible husband. You must be Cynthia. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. Your Uncle Frank used to brag about you a lot. I already told her that, honey. Oh, perfect. It's always <laughs> nice to hear. This is our daughter, Zoe. Hi. Hi. I have all your books oh. signed. I want to be a writer, too. Well, when you're published, I want the first signed copy. <laughs> Deal. Let's get this food on the table. Nice okay. to yeah. meet you. Me too. Hi. Oh! oh. <laughs> I am so sorry. Hi. Hi. Oh, yeah. Well, father. Does that make telling me off and almost running me off the road a little bit more palatable? So, I accidentally almost run you off the road, and you have a direct line with a big man upstairs. So, are you admitting that you almost ran me off the road? Because going by the look on your face the other day, it kind of seemed like you thought I was to blame. It was an accident, I promise. Oh. Besides, that thing's dangerous. It's a classic. How do you even go grocery shopping? I don't. I don't. I have friends, I have neighbors and parishioners, and they bring over casseroles just about every single day. Well, I'm going to be a big disappointment because the only time I ever tried to make a casserole, I ended up close personal friends with the fire chief. <laughs> well, uh, don't worry, my freezer is full anyway. <laughs> Look, our first two interactions were questionable at best, so why don't we try this one more time? I am Father Tim Cavanaugh, and it is a pleasure to meet you, Miss Coppersmith. Your uncle has told me so many wonderful things about you. Is there anybody he didn't talk to about me? Around here, everyone talks to everyone about everything, and if you know that, you will do just fine. Got it.
seen that in other, you know, it's just a suggestion. Writing's a process. I'll get over it. Okay, I, I didn't... Father Tim, mm -hmm. you did promise me a dance tonight. He's yes. all yours. May I have this dance, Miss Coppersmith? Does everybody know everything in Mitford? <laughs> That's right. I'm Jack Emery. Nice to meet you, Jack Emery. You know, I was going to stay home tonight and catch up on some work, but now I'm really glad I didn't. So glad that you came. Good night. <laughs> Zoe? Can we give you a ride home? Oh, um, you know, it's such a beautiful night. I think I'll walk. Okay. Good night. Good night. I'm surprised you turned down that ride. Why? It's a beautiful night. Well, you never know what lurks in the dark in Mitford. I live in Boston. I'm not afraid. Let me walk you home. Wouldn't be very neighborly of me to let you walk home alone in the dark, even if you can totally handle it. OK. Look, I, I'm sorry if I got too personal back there. People tend to come to me for counsel, and then I don't know when to push the off button. Even your uncle used to. You know, some people even say I'm good at it. Yeah, but. Do they have any other choice around here? <laughs> they do not. They are stuck with me and only me. You are only trying to help. I'm sure it's an occupational hazard. And I'm fine. It just happens, you know, you get stuck and then you get a breakthrough. Hmm. Oh. Oh, my oh. shoe is, I'm sorry, it's okay. Boots and sneakers. What's that? That's what people wear around here. They wear boots and sneakers. Uh. I guess my city girl showing. Uh -huh. You'll learn. I am sorry. My strap okay. is just, I don't know what I got you. Oh, wait. Oh, oh dear. Oh, oh, oh. oh. oh gosh. Oh. <laughs> I'm sorry. Are you okay? Yeah. I'm You're right. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. My strap broke. Oh, that shoe. <laughs> Boots and sneakers. Oh. You sure you're okay? I'm okay. fine. Good. We should be careful, though. People see us like this, they might, uh, Start to talk. <laughs> Seems like people talk here, no matter what you do. That too. <laughs> oh. Oh. Um. Hi. Hey. Hi. Everything okay? There we go. Oh, I uh, I broke my shoe. Well, it's a good I... thing I drove by. Get in. I'll take you both home. <sighs> Come on. Thanks. Oh. Um. Okay. I'll probably just uh, walk. My shoes oh. are still intact. So. Oh. Night, neighbor. Good night. Boots and sneakers. Father Tim. Oh, I didn't know you had a dog. Neither did I. He's a stray. Oh, always doing the Lord's work, aren't you? Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, by the way, my niece is in town. Oh, you two have so much in common. Do we? She's an animal person, too. And she likes pizza. It's almost eerie. Some lucky woman will land you yet, Father Tim. Mark my words. <laughs> I just hope it's my niece. Hey, Penny? Mm -hmm. We're going to go home now. Yes, we are. Right? Go. Well, he's definitely a healthy puppy, Tim. He's a puppy? He's the size of an SUV. Is he going to get even bigger? That's usually how that works, yeah. Oh, yeah, I've never seen him before. He's got no chip. It's kind of a mystery. Hmm. Well, I guess I'll put some flyers around town or something. Yeah, pretty smart him choosing you as his new owner. I am not keeping him, Hal. It is a proven fact pets make you live longer. Oh. Of course, having a wife could make you live even longer than that. And all this time, I thought it was healthy eating and exercise to do the trick. <laughs> There you go, folks. Look at that. He, 
He wants to stay with you, Hal. He's gonna love it here with the family and all this space. No, 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 no. We are at full capacity here. And Marge said she would divorce me if I brought home any more strays. And after all that pre-marriage counseling you gave us, I can't imagine you'd want to see that happen. Well played, my friend. Well played. I will keep him until I find his owner. That's all. Come on, dog. No, whoa, whoa, whoa. You, you, you can't call him dog. Okay, you gotta give him a proper name. Well, he may already have a name, and I don't want to give him an identity crisis. Well, he's definitely not a Max or a Rex. What does he look like? Like a guy I went to seminary with? Excuse me? Same eyes. And he also used to come over uninvited and eat me out of house and home. So, there you have it. Until further notice, you will be known as Barnabas. Yes! Uh, no? Come on, I like it. Yeah, that'll do. Okay, I'll give you two a lift. You can't haul them around in that thing you drive. We walked, actually. See, you're acting like a natural dog owner already. Hey, Father Tim. Russell. Hey, Dooley. Hi. Father Tim, I can't thank you enough for offering to watch my grandson. I didn't know what to do with him after school let out for the summer. Oh, it's my pleasure. It'll be nice to have some help around here. His, uh, his official title will be intern. So he doesn't feel like he needs a babysitter. Good thinking. <laughs> Dooley, come on over. Say hello to Father Tim. Hey, Dooley. Hi. Have you met Barnabas? Yeah. <laughs> He's gotten a little withdrawn since his parents were deployed. It's never easy when they're on a tour. I'll get his mind off it, don't you worry. We're gonna have some fun, right, Dooley? Maybe you can help me find his owner. He's not yours. Sure thinks he is. <laughs> He's trying to tell you something right now, you know. Do you speak dog? There's no such thing. What? Of course there is. You just got to give it time. Right now, he's telling you that he wants you to throw that ball for him. I'll do it, but he never said that. Huh. I'll get him out of the show, don't you worry. Oh, once he gets comfortable. He's a fun kid. He's a, he's, he's a prankster. Right? Yesterday, I walked around town with a post-it on my back that said, I'm 100 years old today. <laughs> Didn't know why strangers were telling me I look so good for my age. <laughs> well, I'll be sure to watch my back then. Thank you, Father Tim. OK, you got it. Hi, I have that book you ordered. Great. And I also heard a little rumor about you and Cynthia rolling around on the ground. Marge, she fell down and she took me with her. Oh, That's really? That's it. Don't believe everything that you hear. Okay, that's why I'm asking you. Because mm. I always bet my rumors for accuracy. Oh. <laughs> well, thankfully, this night in Shining Arbor came by and gave her a lift. Oh. oh, it's a good thing I have a car because she was really struggling in those shoes. Mm. Mm. Marge, I want every one of her books. I need to know everything there is to know about that woman. It's been a while since someone made my heart skip a beat like that. Right. And you, you got the lucky geography right next door. Oh, I don't know her very well, but she certainly seems. I know, really great. Not often you meet a woman like that in Mitford. Aren't you going back to Atlanta? Well, once I sell my father's properties, yes, but there's a lot of real estate I need to sell. It may just keep me here as long as she is. Oh. Oh. She is here to work. Well, so am I. We're kindred spirits. What are the odds of that happening, huh? Oh, I need to show a property across the street right now, so I'll be back to pick up the books later. I gotta read them all before I take Cynthia to dinner at the country club tomorrow night. She's going out with you? Well, she doesn't know it yet, but she will. Morning. Now you mind Father Tim, and I'll see you tonight, okay? I want to come with you. Dooley, we've been over this. Now come on. Oh, I got him, I got him. Hey, Dooley, I made up those flyers I was telling you about to try and find Barnabas's owner. 
What do you say we put him up? If we find his owner, would you have to give him back? I would. I would. That's what he would want. How do you know? I told you I speak dog. You're weird. Maybe so, but I am bilingual. Hmm. Cynthia, hi, it's Jack Emery. Hi, Jack. Thanks again for the ride the other night. Those shoes were not my best judgment call. <laughs> well, we live and learn, right? I'm just happy I showed up when I did. Tell me about it. Listen, uh, the reason I'm calling is I want to take you to dinner. Tomorrow night at the Country Club. Best spaghetti bolognese on the planet. They've got articles written about it. Wow, that sounds amazing. Thank you so much, Jack. Um... You know, I am kind of on a roll here, and I've got so much work to do. Maybe another time. I completely understand. Work is important. Another time. Well, thanks again, Jack. Ow! Ow! Oh, buddy. You okay? Oh, man, that's a nasty little oh, scrape I'll there. I'll grab my first aid kit. Okay. Cake. All right, you come with me. I'll help you up. Right, here, let's go sit down. Take it easy. Oh, that's too bad. It's okay if I take a look at it? I'm Cynthia, your neighbor. What's your name? Dooley. Well, you know what? That doesn't look so bad. You might live. <laughs> This might sting just a little. No. No. Look how brave no. you are. You know what bravery calls for. A reward. How about some lemonade? Okay. Well, that's it. <laughs> yeah. Here we are. You have more books here than the library. <laughs> Most of them are my uncle's books. He, he loved, loved books. books. How did you know that? I borrowed most of these. He was very generous with his books. You liked him? Everyone liked Frank. And maybe that's why the town has taken to you so quickly. Either that or they look at me like I'm some alien form. <laughs> you know, we have met other city people before. You're not our first. And they have taken to you. Trust me. Marge, Hal, Jack. Maybe it's the familiar link. You know, my uncle really encouraged me to read, and that led to my writing. How's that going? Great. I know you're not asking for advice, and I certainly wouldn't give you any, but sometimes when you focus so hard on what's not working, you can actually make the block worse. <sighs> Dooley. Violet's letting you pet her. She <laughs> never lets anybody pet her, except for me, and I feed her. She likes you. Well, I made two friends today, Violet and you. Here you go, Dooley. Your grandfather's gonna be here soon, okay? Thanks for the on advice. I wouldn't dream of giving you any. And you're welcome. Hey, Marge, I'm looking for a book for a 10-year-old boy. 10-year-old boy. I know just the one. Ta-da! Narnia! <laughs> you are the book whisperer, Marge. I've always been a bookworm. And I'm saving a spot for your next book right here. Oh, well, you might be waiting a while. I mean, these things take time to get oh. published. A little writer's block? 
Oh. No secrets in Mitford. <laughs> Not a one. Look, I don't mean to be nosy, but I personally don't think there's such a thing as writer's block. I think it's all there. It's just hiding, you know? Well, I think the best thing for writer's block is a completely unrelated activity. Like gardening. Or dinner with a handsome man, oh, with someone that some may call the most eligible bachelor in Mitford. <laughs> That's not the direction I was going in at all. Well, maybe it should be. I don't know. It's been a long time since I've been on a date. Well, I think it's the perfect activity for taking your mind off that book. Just try something new and different. Step off that ledge and break through that block. You know what? You're right. Hmm. I'm gonna do it. <laughs> I'm gonna call up Jack Emery and tell him I'll have dinner with him. Thank you, Marge. I... I was talking about Father Tim. Thank you. So then I moved to Atlanta permanently and I switched to commercial real estate. I mean, I'd sold just about every property in Midford anyway. You can answer it. No, you know what? They can wait. People aren't nearly present enough nowadays. And when you're sitting across from such a beautiful woman, that's where your attention should be. So you said that you're only here until the house is sold? Pretty much. I need a good realtor if you could recommend one. <laughs> well, I actually know a great one. Me. Now, I don't really do residential anymore, but I still have my license, so I could do it for you. Oh, thank you. Well, it's important to be guided by someone you can trust. So when do you want to list it? In about a month. That's, uh, that's soon. You getting sick of old Mitford already? No. Actually, not at all. It's just, I came here to write my book, and I've got to get back to my real life. I know what you mean. Me too. So, what is your real life like in Atlanta? It's good. I mean, it could be better. After my divorce, I, uh, I threw myself into my work. It was a necessary distraction. But... Now that I'm three years away from it, I feel like I want more again. Yeah, well, I'm only one year away, so I guess I have something to look forward to. <laughs> it gets better. Trust me. I know. Every day. But I appreciate you saying it. You're welcome. One thing I'll say, Mitford did get right, though. It introduced us. <laughs> Thanks for dinner. I was hoping it was the first of many. No, 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 no. You are so grounded. Oh, guys, I'm so sorry. I apologize. I opened the door and he just bolted right out and I couldn't stop him because I had these in my hands. I... Jack? Tim? These are from Barnabas. He is eternally sorry and begs for your forgiveness. Well, Barnabas, you are eternally forgiven. <laughs> OK, all right, let's go. Let's go, big guy. Let's go. Here we go. Go on, go on. Go on. Okay, come on, let's go. Come on, sorry. Come on. Good night. Good night. Uh, sorry. Good night. Good night, Jack. All right, Barnabas, this walk was your idea. Come on. Um, well, either you come for a walk with us or Barnabas is going to be living with you from now. <laughs> sure, I'll come. Yeah? Boots or sneakers? Boots. Boots it is. See, I'm adapting. What are you doing? What are you doing, man? Well, I'm sorry if I ruined your date. Oh, you didn't. Maybe Barnabas did, but his A is make up for it. So, how was it? It was good. I just couldn't get my mind off my book, or the lack thereof. My deadline is less than a month. So, what did you do if that happened in the past? Well, the thing is, it never used to happen. If I felt like I was going in the wrong direction, I would just talk to my ex. I had someone to bounce ideas off of, someone to help me get back on track. And now? Well, I guess he's sharing his creative energy with his new wife. Mm. Have you ever been married? I've been engaged, but it didn't work out. Well, at least you had the good sense to back out before you made a big mistake. <laughs> Actually, I didn't. She did. Oh, I'm sorry. 
No, she couldn't see herself as the pastor's wife. It's, it's a different sort of path. I mean, I think giving back is one of the most rewarding experiences anyone could ever have, but she didn't really see the benefits that, like I did. And plus, I couldn't share everything with her because, because of the confidentiality aspect, so it's not for everyone. Well, tell that to the women of this town. They don't seem to mind your occupation. <laughs> I'm sure that was a really difficult time. Well, my father always used to say that the only way to truly get over a broken heart is to find love again. So what you're saying is it's going to be a while before I finish my book? <laughs> Hi. Hi. I um, wanted to thank you again for the azalea. Well, it's the least that we could do. And by we, I mean Barnabas. <laughs> and I picked up something for Dooley, some books that I thought he might like. Oh, that's very sweet of you. Thank you. Russell's going to drop him over here in a little bit. I was thinking we could do something, but... Um... Oh, yeah. I'd love to, to talk later, but right now I've got company. Yeah, I'm sorry. I... Didn't mean to intrude. No, that's fine. Thank you for thinking of Dooley. Yeah. Bye. Hi. Hi. How are you feeling? Oh, all right. How and I have been to the hospital three times now. Braxton Hicks. Oh, how did Dooley like the books? I don't know yet. I gave them to Tim. Dooley wasn't there yet. Okay. Tim had company, so we didn't really talk. A very pretty woman. Well, who was she? I don't know. I've never seen her before. Mm. But he can have a woman over without us prying into his business. Right, of course. But he didn't introduce you? That's odd. That's what I thought. Not that it bothered me. But you know, normally, when someone is there and someone else walks up... Right. It's strange. Well, it doesn't matter. It's none of our business. Right. None of our business. Mm. But I'll find out who she is anyway. <laughs> That is so strange that the flyers are all gone. Hmm, that is weird. Come on, Barnabas. Let's go. Or maybe they didn't just disappear after all. I've been wanting to read these. You should probably thank Cynthia. Is she your girlfriend? No, she's my neighbor. Why do you ask? Because when I'm friends with a girl, that's what grown-ups ask me. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, but no, she's just a friend. <laughs> Hello, Barnabas. Hello, buddy. Oh, there you are. Good morning. What do you have there? Let's try it. Mm. A caramel macchiato. <laughs> I have been staring at a blank piece of paper all morning. This is just what I need to get some words written. Where did you get it? I made it. I bought an espresso machine for my dad, but he's a purist. Plain old black coffee guy. Boring. Yeah, I know. So basically, it's now for me when I'm here. You know what they say. You can take the boy away from the city, but you can't take the macchiato away from the boy. I'm indebted to you. I like to see you smile. Now, show me this house I'm going to sell for you. So, what do you think? It's perfection. Really? You're not going to give me a whole to-do list to get the house ready to sell? No, no, it's fine. You know, people just look at a house for its bones. Most want to gut it, renovate it, and make it their own. Gut it? Yeah, for the most part. You might want to clean up that garden, though. It's a good selling point. I know just the right guy. I want this transaction to be perfect and effortless for you. I know this is your uncle's house, and I know what it meant to him. So let's do right by him. Thank you. Oh, God bless. And again, and again. Are you OK? I'm sorry, I was fine when I came in. 
Do you have a pet? Yes. Oh, Jack, I didn't know you had allergies. You have a cat? Oh, dear. Is this uh, going to be a problem for selling the house? No, no. I will take an antihistamine, but right now, right now I have to go. Okay. Uh, oh. <laughs> Jack? Tim? Allergies. <laughs> Cats. Oh, that's too bad. We'll put you on the prayer chain. Oh, no, I'm, oh, it's okay. I'm fine. Thanks. Uh, well, the garden at the church was bursting with these, and I thought you might like them. Wow, they are beautiful. Aren't they, Jack? Yeah, beautiful. Listen, I'm sorry. I was going to take your lunch, but I got to go. Oh, no, that's okay. We'll do it another time. You take care of yourself. Sure. I love cats. Oh, my. Careful! Thank you. That's so sweet. That's so kind of you to come over there. Traffic was okay? All right, I'll see you at the church. Busy at your place. Looks like a three casserole day. <laughs> you checking up on me? Some things are hard to miss. You need a tuna casserole because I've got like seven. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know you paint. Yeah, I do all my illustrations. Uh, I thought since the words weren't coming, I would start this way and see what happens. Hmm. Well, your blending technique is so beautiful. Am I being annoying right now, watching you paint over your shoulder? Not at all. <laughs> You're a woman of many talents. Well, unfortunately, some of them are sleeping right now. I could help you bounce around some ideas if you want. That's the problem. I uh, don't know where to begin. It's like he left and uh, took my creativity with him. He isn't what made you a good writer. You can write just as well with or without him. You are a smart, kind, talented woman, and whether he's there or not, that doesn't change any of that. Thank you, Father Tim. You can just call me Tim. And now, in a strange role reversal kind of way, I'd love to get your advice on something. Sure, anything. Great, come with me. I'll drive. Where to? The church. Okay, but we're walking, because I'm not getting on that scooter thing. <laughs> And originally, it was just that front part right there, and just, uh, just the white in the chapel. Oh. And over the years, we just sort of added on. Hey! Hey, you two. Hello. Hi. Hi there. Can I stay for a little walk? <laughs> well, it wasn't so much a walk as it was a rejection of a scooter. Well, oh. you've seen him drive. Everyone has seen him drive. <laughs> I'm so glad I ran into you both. Hal and I want to have everyone over to the farm for Labor Day. One final summer picnic before the real Labor Day descends upon us. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like fun. I think Russell's got to work, but Dooley and I will be there. Great. And I can bring macaroni and cheese and bacon. Oh, I'm so over that. Just ice cream, 24-7. Got it. That's okay. easy. With chocolate sauce? And sprinkles? You got that? I can okay. do that. Hey, right. we'll see you then. Okay. Okay. Drive safe. Thanks. Take care, you two. The original pastor of this church painted both of these. They're actually over 100 years old. And I've been wanting to restore them for some time now, but I wanted to make sure I did it right. They're incredible, Tim. So what do you think it'll take? A conservation varnish over the original artwork will protect it, but then you need to come in and delicately paint over it. Hmm. So I guess any old guy could do it then, right? Sure. <laughs> yeah. I can do it. You know, I can't ask that of you. You've got your book. No, I want to. It's good to give back. And my right brain could use the distraction. I'll paint all day and write all night. Uh -huh. That does sound like the perfect balance. I mean, we could pay you a little bit. Oh, I wouldn't dream of it. I want to do it from effort. Okay. Father Tim, here's the altar arrangement for Sunday. I added Lilies, your favorite. Very nice, Sally. Cynthia has offered to restore our paintings. Isn't that great? Great. Um, it is Episcopalian art, though. May not be her specialty. Are you Episcopalian? Actually, I am. <laughs> I'm sure even if she was Protestant, it would probably be fine, but it's a good thing that we don't have to convert you. Let me get some pictures so that I can color match the paints. Great. Are we lucky? So lucky. <sighs> Father Tim Cavanaugh. Oh, no. Yeah, absolutely. I will be right there. I'm on my way.
Russell Jax is at Dr. Harper's office. He's taken a really bad fall. Oh, well, let me come with you in case you need help with doing it. Oh, okay, thank you. We're waiting for the ambulance to take him to the hospital in Wesley. No, no, I can't go to Wesley. Somebody has to pick up Dooley from the neighbors and... Russell, I can do all of that. You're gonna be fine, Russell, and so is Dooley. I'm fine now. Doc, you just tell me where to sign and I'll get out of your hair. I don't need surgery. Russell, you need surgery. But who's going to watch Dooley? You've been so good to him already, I can't ask you to take him in. You don't have to ask because I just offered. I don't know how I'll ever be able to thank you. You just focus on getting better. We'll take care of Dooley. Together. You're going to be fine. Thank you. Come on in, it's open. Hi. Hi. Brought the cake. Great. Boy, it smells good in here. Ancient family recipe. It's a secret. It goes back decades. Frozen pizza. My lips are sealed. Where's Dooley? He says he doesn't want to come out for dinner. Poor guy. I mean, first his parents leave, and now he's stuck with virtual strangers. Well, he has to eat. I know. You know, I think I have an idea to cheer him up. I just have to run out. Okay. Oh, I'm gonna leave the cake. <laughs> I'll be right back. Okay. <laughs> Dooley, it's time for dinner. Not hungry. There's somebody here to see you. Welcome to your indoor picnic. Wow. Where's my drink? I'm in. Cheers. Oh, you take it. Yeah. <laughs> Remember, if you need anything at all, I'm right upstairs, okay? Let's go, Barnabas. Wait, can you stay? He told me he wanted to have a sleepover. I forgot to tell you. I speak dog now, too. <laughs> okay, then. Good night, Dooley. Good night, Miss Coppersmith. Good night, you two. Thank you for helping out with Dooley. I think he's really starting to open up. Wow. Well. He doesn't know where he belongs right now. Yeah. I can relate. I know where you belong. In front of a computer right in your book. <laughs> <laughs> well, I did get a title. It's a start. What? You didn't tell me that. That's big progress. Yeah, I got it last night, you know, before all the stuff with Dooley. And are you going to share it? Because you know I happen to be a big fan of violence. Um, not yet. Oh, are you going to make me wait? <laughs> yes. <laughs> well. Good night, Tim. Good night, Cynthia. James. Tell me you're almost done. I need those pages and I needed them yesterday, Cynthia. I still have time. Yeah, but it's getting shorter. I'm making progress. A little? Look, I don't mean to put added pressure on you. But if you miss this deadline, they're going to drop you. No more Violet the Cat. The publisher's breathing down my neck and I can only protect you for so long. I know, James. I'll get it done. All right. Yeah. Don't you listen to him, Violet. Can I please have a bottle of fizzy water? Sure. You sleep all right? Yep. Could you open it for me? Absolutely. Hey! Gotcha. Come on, Barnabas. Uh, Let's go. Nice one, Dooley. And there was club soda literally all over my shirt. <laughs> what I'm wearing is the second shirt of the day. Well, you have to admit, it's a pretty clever trick. Where is he? I want to tell him I'm impressed. He's helping Sally in the office. 
Man, Russell warned me. He said that he could be a little prankster. Well, you know, you're gonna have to get him back. I don't know any pranks. I might be able to help you with that. You know some pranks? Are there any limits to your talents? No, they're impotent. <laughs> well, these are coming along so nicely. Yeah, and I'll be able to finish before I leave. And when is that exactly? Well, when I sell the house. But first things first, I have got to get that garden together. Yeah, and uh, write a book sometime in there. Yeah, that too. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, this has been very meditative. It's helped. I've always found them very powerful. It makes me remember why I decided to become a priest. Why is that? I lost my father when I was a kid, and I uh, became very shut down. And it was this place, this church, that brought me back. Everyone here rallied around me. My mother and I realized that family isn't only blood, it's community, it's congregation. And I knew that I needed to be that for people, the same way that they saved me. Just like what you're doing for Dooley. Something like that, yeah. In this life, we're always searching for where we belong, but one day it became very clear to me that I belonged up there on that altar, boring people to tears every Sunday. I am sure <laughs> you're not that boring. Oh, I am. Well, we'll just have to see about that. Yeah? So you'll come on Sunday? Yeah. And you will stay awake? Well, no promises there. I'll take it. <laughs> oh. Sorry. No, go ahead. Hi, Jack. Yeah, yeah, I can talk. <clears throat> I'm fine. Uh, how are you? Oh. <laughs> Why did you have me change my shirt? The other one was fine. <laughs> that one looked nice. Why? For dinner. I made it, sort of. I heated up some stuff for one of the church women. Oh. It smells good. Oh, by the way, Miss Coppersmith is coming over for dinner. How did that happen? When you invited her. Look at your text. But I didn't send this text. That's weird. Your phone sure says you did. Oh, you should get that. It's your guest. Don't worry about me, I already ate. Oh, cash rolls in the microwave. Hi. It seems we've been set up. <laughs> this is nice. Thank you, Dooley. You're welcome. <laughs> Everyone's a matchmaker around here. Well, I am sure there are no shortage of women in town who are happily vying for the title of Mrs. Father Tim Cavanaugh. But like I said, she's not in Midford. You're telling me there isn't one woman who has remotely piqued your interest? Well, there's a certain thing, and I felt it once with my ex-fiance, and that is the criteria, and you can't settle for less. Yeah, I know that feeling. And once you've had it, you just can't lower your standards. It makes everything harder. Yes, it does. Is that what you're looking for with Jack? Oh, no. I don't mean to pry. It's none of my business. No, he's selling my uncle's house, and he's friendly. He makes a great cup of coffee. Yeah. But that's, that's all. I mean, how can I start a relationship here when I'm going to be leaving so soon? You're right. It wouldn't make any sense. And a couple more things before we go. Russell Jacks, unfortunately, is still in the hospital, so please add him to your prayer chains, okay? And on a happier note, Mrs. Sloan is feeling a whole lot better. She thanks the entire congregation for the flowers, for the good thoughts. Clearly, your prayers are making a difference, so keep it up, everyone. And I'd also like to thank Ms. Cynthia Coppersmith for taking the time to restore our treasured paintings. It means so much to everyone here. Thank you so much, Cynthia. <laughs> really? Uh, okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> woo! Oh. 
<sighs> that was great. It's not your first time, <laughs> is it? No, good job. Whew. And? <sighs> oh, no way. You have got to be kidding me. Your caramel macchiato. Again? Mm -hmm. How am I ever going to repay you? No repayment necessary. I care about my clients. I care about you. Listen, I've got to show that building on Main, uh, but uh, just to recap the plan, we've got uh, azaleas in the back, uh, roses around the edges, peonies and delphiniums are... Uh, uh... In the center. All right. And then we will have restored my uncle's garden to its former glory. Well, I'll get my guy on it right away. You know, I already have a young couple from Wesley interested in looking at it. Already? Mm-hmm. I don't think I'm ready. I've got your back, Cynthia. I promise. I will take care of you. Yeah? Yeah. What are you drinking? A caramel macchiato. Is that English? <laughs> it's Italian. <laughs> when did coffee get so fancy? When they started charging six dollars for it. Yeah. Hey, we came up with a master plan to restore my uncle's garden. Great. Show me. Sure. And then roses all along the perimeter. Frank would have loved that. I can help you prep it. Well, thank you. I really want to do right by him. He encouraged my writing. I wrote my first book in the garden. Oh. It was called The Unicorn Princess. It was about a lost butterfly. Clearly, my narrative <laughs> skills have improved with time. But you haven't been back much over the years. He came to all my book signings, always in the front row. It's not every day you get a best-selling author in the family. They weren't always. My first two weren't successful. And then I gave Violet magical powers to help children solve their problems, and everything clicked. If only we all had a magical cat. <laughs> <laughs> right. My marriage was struggling, and I didn't know how to fix it. So you gave Violet the power to fix problems that you couldn't? Something like that. But now, everything has to be a bestseller. You can't please all the people all the time. You gotta write what speaks to you, because that's when your voice is the most powerful. At least, that's what I hope for when I write my sermons. Well, it's working, because you're very well received. As are your books. You just write what moves us, and hopefully our passion comes through for others. Passion. That's what I'm missing. I think I've lost my passion. Well, we all do from time to time, but you can get it back. I didn't realize what time it is. I'm, I'm sorry, I gotta... No, go ahead. It's fine. Okay, I'll see you. nice talking to you. Good morning, Dooley. Put your cereal there on the counter. Help yourself. Thank you. <laughs> I got <gotcha>. you. <laughs> it was frozen. The whole bowl. Wow, you really stepped up your game. I'm impressed. Thank you. I mean, I can't take all the credit because I found it online, but I got it good. Julie, are you excited to see your grandpa? Yeah, I mean, I love being with Barnabas, but I miss my grandpa. I know everything feels upside down, but that's just for now. Yeah, you'll be together in no time. Nope, you can't see him. No exceptions. You need to be 12 to come into this unit. Sorry, I don't make the rules, but I have to follow them. <sighs> but it's his grandfather, and it's his only family. See, the thing is, his parents are away in the military. You can't bend the rules just a little bit. Sorry, Tim, but you tell him that Russell is improving every single day. He'll be home soon. He even took a walk by himself to the garden yesterday. So he can leave the unit? For a short period of time, yeah. I have an idea. I'm right there with you. Julie! <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Harper. I haven't seen him this happy in a while. Well, technically, we haven't broken any rules. I mean... They are outside the hospital. And yeah, this will do them both some good. Family always does. 
You guys will have him back in 10, though, right? You got it, Doc. Okay. Thanks. Thanks for taking me to see Grandpa. Can we do it again? Sure we can. Good night, you two. Good night. You're staying right there. Good night. Good night. Good night, Barnabas. This hat is way too small That's for me. Right. I don't know. Really? You have a big head. <laughs> that means I got a big brain. That jacket looks great on you. The women in this town are not going to know what to do with this dapper dance. Hmm. Well, thank you for helping me pick it out. I've been needing one for a while. You look like a new man. It's happening, Violet. Your magic is helping someone else. Hello? Hey. Hey. Wow. What? You look not like a priest. <laughs> Well, today I'm a carpenter. I feel like I'm always fixing things around here. One time in a sermon, I hit the lectern so hard that it broke. <laughs> I bet you that woke up the people in the back pew. Sadly, it did not. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, are you working here all day? I am. I got a lot done this morning, so I'm all good. Oh, good. Great. Um, do you think maybe that you could lock up for me? Because I've got an appointment that I need to get to. Sure, I can do that. Yeah? I'll just leave the keys in the office, okay? Okay. Hey, Al. Hey. Listen, thanks for uh, letting me use it, man. Yeah, what's it for anyway? Oh, a uh, surprise for Cynthia. You like this girl. Just trying to be a good neighbor. Thanks, Al. Jack. Oh, my gosh. <clears throat> This is incredible. I knew you said you had a guy that was going to do this, but I thought I would have to help. What an unbelievable surprise. Oh, I didn't really Oh, uh... you got everything. How am I ever going to thank you? Well, you don't have to thank me. You know, this is better than I could have ever imagined. Oh. Tim, did you see what Jack did? The garden's been transformed. What Jack did? Yeah, well, I mean, Tim helped. You did? Oh, Tim, that is so sweet. Oh, thank you so much. I, I, this is the kindest thing that anyone has ever done for me. That's very kind. <laughs> I mean, I want to give Tim credit where credit is due. No, 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 thank you. Uh, but you really seem to uh, have it under control, so I will, um, I'll let you finish. And, and I'm... Um, more than happy to help you. Oh. Yeah. Thank you, Jack Emery. Gosh. I have the most beautiful garden in Midford. Oh. I'm done, Violet. Oh. And if I may toot my own horn, it's pretty darn good. Hmm? Coming! Hey. Please.
please tell me you're awake. I was awake, and nothing is waking Dooley up. Come on in. I have news, and I wanted to tell you first. An honor I do not take lightly. I finished my book, and I did it for me and nobody else but me. Oh, and Dooley, you'll see. This does call for a celebration. Come on. <laughs> it's just sparkling apple juice, mm. in case Dooley was awake. Oh, well, I'll save him some. Tim, I just wanted to say thank you for being such a good friend since I've been here. A friend, yeah. Because that's what friends do. To honoring your own voice. Sign is up. So soon? Well, you finished your book. Isn't that what you were waiting for? I guess. Hey, I'm doing a deal in Boston. I'm going to be there in two weeks. This isn't the end. I just had to put the sign up now because I've got a conference call in an hour, but I'll see you later. Oh, I can't. I'm going to the Labor Day party at Howell and Marches. Okay, then I'll have to show the house without you. Show the house? It's not listed. Okay, so maybe I went ahead and listed it. But just to get a jump on the market, and I told everyone we wouldn't show it until you're ready, all right? Okay, I'll leave you at the key. Right. the jeans. Well, you said it was a picnic, so I wore my picnic clothes. <laughs> this place is beautiful. I'll show you around. Sure. Thank you. Oh, hey, Tim. Uh, I found out that Barnabas's owner was a old man of Blackstock who passed away. Oh, that's too bad. Does that mean Barnabas is ours? I mean, yours for good? I guess it does. And he is ours. You come by and you play with him anytime you want. Okay? <laughs> hey. Hey. I took down those posters to find Barnabas's owner. I just, I didn't want him to leave. Hmm. You know, uh, telling the truth takes a lot of courage. And a boy with courage grows up to be a man with courage. Come on. This is the tire swing that oh. I grew up when we brought it over from the <laughs> oh, other one. So you have horses? Mm. Yep. You can ride one if you want. Joker's pretty tame. I don't know how. I can teach you. You really? ride? Yeah. I gotta keep a running list on all your hidden talents. <laughs> I just can't keep up. Come on, let's go ride. You know, dude, riding a horse, it's about building a bond of trust, just like you have with Barnabas. She's great with Dooley. Oh, yeah. She's great with everyone. Grab hold of the horn. There you go. Put in there. You've got it. Sure are going to miss her around here. Yeah. Now. I'm not going to let you fall. But if you do fall, I'll catch you. Because that's what family does. Good job. Thanks. <laughs> Who's going to catch you when you fall? Oh, honey. He's already fallen. You ready to try it by yourself? You look great. Come on. You got it. That was great. Come on. Baked or mashed? I'm gonna have uh, baked for sure, no doubt about it. Why don't you tell her? I know you want her to stay. It doesn't matter. She doesn't look at me that way. Big city woman settling in a small town to become a pastor's wife. That story has been told before, and it didn't have a happy ending. You'll never know unless you give her a chance. Take a leap. That's what you're always telling us to do. Come 
<laughs> Bedtime, Dooley. Thanks for teaching me how to ride today. Oh, you're welcome. You did great. <laughs> All right. You go brush your teeth, okay? I'll be here in a sec. Okay. Come on, Barnabas. I'm gonna miss that kid. Oh, he's gonna miss you too. A lot of us are. Well, you've all become very special to me, too. I understand why my uncle didn't move away. It's hard to leave. But you're still going to. Well, Jack has a few offers on the house. I don't know. Cynthia. I'm sorry. Sorry. Uh, um, what were you saying? Nah, it's not important. You go ahead and take the call. I can wait. I'll ask you another time. What? Okay. Okay. I'll see you later. All right. Hi, Jack. James. Cynthia Coppersmith, the best thing you've ever written, hands down. Now, we have press and promotion to plan, not to mention they want four more Violet books after this one. That is incredible. Uh, it's almost like you found your voice. It's unlike any of the others. Can't quite put my finger on it. But you were right. The change of pace is just what you needed. Now, when are you coming home? I want to sit down and craft a plan. I'm not sure. Well, figure it out, because Cynthia Coppersmith is back and better than ever. Thanks, James. Hi. Hi. What do you have there? Ice cream. We have to celebrate. My editor loved my book and they signed me for four more. I'm so happy for you. You deserve this. And you deserve this ice cream. <laughs> no, really, Tim. I don't think I could have done it without you. Well, then I'll take that gratitude with chocolate sauce and sprinkles. <laughs> My uncle was wise to come to you for counsel. All of your parishioners are. Hmm. You have a gift. Thank you. Is that what you are, a, a parishioner? No. Well, that and a friend. I wish I could repay you. No need. That's the job I signed on for. I can't wait to read your book. Do you want to hear some? I would love that. Young Dooley felt alone. His parents were away, his grandfather was ill, and he wasn't sure where he belonged. Then in walked Violet, the magic cat, and his whole life changed. It's <laughs> about Dooley. And you, the kind priest who comes in and saves us all. Russell, Dooley, Barnabas, me. But you'll have to wait until it's published to read the rest. Well, I can't wait. So, how much longer for the paintings, you think? I'll finish the last section today, and then I'll be out of your hair. I'm sure it'll be a welcome change to be rid of your nosy neighbor watching all the comings and goings of your house. There aren't that many. Other than the occasional casserole being dropped off. Yeah, and the, I don't know who she is, the, your girlfriend. Why would you think I have a girlfriend? Well, the pretty, mysterious woman that comes by. I've never seen her around town, so I just assumed. Oh. I can't really say too much about that. I, I don't mean to be evasive. But she's not. No, she's not. Tim, there um, you are. I've been looking for you. Why aren't you answering your phone? Oh, I'm sorry. I've, I've been busy painting all morning. Oh. Tim? Anyway, good news. We've got a buyer for the house. We have multiple offers, over asking. There's no way you can turn that down. This will truly honor your uncle's memory. So, that's that. Yeah, that's that. Hey, hey, hey! The patient is ready for his shot. Oh, boy. There he is. You know, I'm so glad he decided to adopt you. Hmm. You two are a good pair. I guess we are stuck with each other, eh, buddy? Just you and me, Barnabas. Only you two? Well, and Dooley, of course. No one else. She sold her house, Hal. She's going back to Boston. And you're just going to let her? 
Let her. What am I supposed to do? Well, for a start, you could tell her how you feel. Ask her how she feels. She's told me how she feels several times. I'm a friend, and I've offered good counsel. And like I said, this story has been told before. Well, then you need to rewrite the ending. You a vet or a therapist? Well, you know, the only one around here gets to tell people what to do. Tim, if I've learned anything from you over the years, it's... You gotta have a little faith. Come on, you. Let's go. These shelves are gonna look so empty without all his books. I know, Violet. I'm having a hard time packing up, too. I mean, I, we, we could got these old clubs if you just yeah. like, hit balls. Of the... You could, um, but I probably wouldn't recommend it. Hi. Hey there. Hey. 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 I brought macaroni and cheese with bacon. Oh. Homemade, so it's probably terrible. <laughs> oh, uh, it's the thought that counts. <laughs> right. <laughs> Russell, you look great. I feel great. I'm just glad to be at home again with this guy. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll still spend lots of time together, right? You, me, and Barnabas? Yeah. yeah. And Miss Coppersmith. Of course, for as long as I'm still here. Can't thank the two of you enough for everything you've done. My pleasure. No problem at all. Um, Cynthia, uh, go over and say thank you. I just, whoa, <laughs> hey. Grandpa said I should say thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go put this on the table. Faith, my friend. So I found out who that woman is that's been visiting Tim. Her name's Olivia Davenport, and she is from Wesley. That explains why I've never seen her around town. Turns out that she's just having marital problems, and he's helping her talk it through, just like he helps everyone. One of the reasons why he's our most eligible bachelor. Hmm. And looks like he's off the hook with Sally. Well, good for Sally. Every pot deserves its lid, and I'm glad she has hers. Every pot? Well, maybe I've already had my lid, and that's all I get. I don't think that's true. Look, he's not interested in any of them. Have you seen the way he looks at you? He does always feel like he wants to say something to me, mm. but he never does. Maybe he will now. Can I talk to you? Father Tim, can you come for dinner on Friday? My niece from... I'm sorry, Mr. Shipley. Shipley. I'm not going to be able to do that. Thank you. Tim, what is it? I'm going to follow my own advice, and I'm going to take a leap of faith. <gasps> yes. Sorry about that, bud. Well, I didn't get the girl. But at least I got the deal. Tell me everything. Oh, what's to tell, Marge? You saw what happened. Yeah, everybody saw. Right. So, have you seen him? Not since yesterday. Well, what are you gonna do? I don't know. Well, how do you feel about him? I just don't think we fit. Why would you say that? Well, he's a priest, and I'm me. He is not looking for a saint. He's looking for his person. 
Besides, after everything he did for your garden, you mean what he and Jack did? Look, Jack is really good at taking credit, not so good at taking action. The garden was all Tim. All Tim. Look, he is the whole package, and you are his person. Jack, you can come pick up the sign. I'm not selling. Look, there is no use in trying to give the hard sell. I have made up my mind. All right, Jack, you take care. So, you closed escrow. Oh, no, I, uh, I canceled escrow. Looks like you're not getting rid of your nosy neighbor after all. Whose garden you redid by yourself? You know about that? Yeah, I know about that. And you're not going home? I am home. It just took me a while to realize it. I can't say I'm disappointed to hear that. I am thankful. And I apologize. You apologize? For what? From the moment I got here, you saw me. You made me feel like the woman I used to be. I had closed up shop after my husband left. And you opened it. But for some reason, I, I couldn't see you. I mean, I did, but as a priest, and not as the incredible kitsch that every woman in this town knows you are. But I won't make that mistake again. Well, you better not. I am a catch. And you're caught. Beautiful day. You want to go for a ride through our fair town? I'm yours, but I'm driving. <laughs> <laughs>